Cheap laptops are getting good. The Chewy CoreBook Pro is a smaller laptop that punches well above its $400 price range. They seem to be prioritizing the design and screen at the expense of the specs, but again it is only $400 US dollars. So while you won't be video editing or gaming, I think the CoreBook Pro would be a better option than similarly priced Chromebooks, as you still get the full Windows experience. The lid and bottom panel are both metal, then the interior keyboard area seems to be plastic. It's giving off serious MacBook vibes with its space gray finish. Overall, it has a premium feeling to it for the price point. There aren't any sharp corners or edges, but there is some flex when pushing down on the keyboard. The metal lid was very solid though. The weight is listed at 1.34 kilos or 2.95 pounds. With the small 65 watt power brick and cables for charging, we're looking at under 1.7 kilos or 3.7 pounds all up. As a 13 inch machine, it's on the smaller side too, so it's quite portable, though it is a bit deeper to accommodate the 3x2 display, which has 6.5 millimeters thin screen bezels on the sides. The glossy IPS screen has a 2160 by 1440 resolution. It's not a touchscreen, but it's got a decent colour gamut and okay brightness. Below the 300 nits I like to see. But again, for a $400 machine, not bad at all. Backlight bleed wasn't too bad. This is a worst case, and I never noticed it during normal use, but results will vary between laptops. There's a 720p camera above the screen in the middle. No Windows Hello support, but again, no surprise at the price point. This is what the camera and microphone look and sound like, and this is what it sounds like to type on the keyboard. It can't quite be opened up with one finger, but the screen is capable of going the full 180 degrees back. The chiclet keyboard has white backlighting which illuminates all keys and secondary key functions. It's not super bright and the lighting was a little patchy. Key brightness can be adjusted between two levels or turned off with the F5 shortcut key. The layout is a little different to what I'm used to, with delete below backspace and the backslash down the bottom, but compromises need to be made with a smaller device like this. It worked well for typing though, here's how it sounds to give you an idea of what to expect. The power button is on the top right of the keyboard. It doesn't light up and it has a red accent, so I thought it might be a fingerprint scanner, but it's not. So I guess it's just so you can feel it's different and don't accidentally press it. The precision touchpad is plastic and mostly worked well, but mine occasionally had this sort of double click where after pressing down I could press further, which felt a bit strange when it happened. Fingerprints were a little harder to see on the silver finish, but were easy to clean with a microfiber cloth. On the left from the back there's the power input and USB Type-C port, and the Type-C port can also be used to charge the laptop. The right side has a micro SD card slot, 3.5mm headphone jack, and a USB 3 Type-A port right at the back. There's nothing going on over on the back or front, both are just clean. Underneath has some air vents towards the back, as well as thick rubber feet which did an excellent job of preventing movement. There's a little hatch with two screws screws that gives you quick and easy access to the second M.2 slot, which I thought was a nice touch. To get the bottom panel off though, you've got to take out 11 more Phillips head screws from the base, then two more from underneath the rear rubber feet. There's not really any incentive to get in here unless you need to change the primary M.2 drive that it ships with as other components are soldered to the motherboard. Pretty standard at this size, but at least the battery is replaceable. The 8GB of soldered memory does at least run in dual channel, and we've got Wi-Fi 5, so neither can be upgraded by the user. The speakers are on the bottom along the front. They sounded okay, a little above average for a laptop of this size, but at max volume there was some chassis vibration or distortion sounds, and the latency mon results were looking alright. The CoreBook Pro is powered by a 46 watt hour battery, and it lasted for just over 5 hours in my YouTube playback test with screen brightness set to 50%, background apps disabled, and keyboard lighting off. At idle it was cool to the touch, barely getting to 30 degrees celsius on the keyboard. Even under heavy CPU stress test it was hardly much warmer at all. 40 right up the back worst case where you don't even need to touch. Let's have a listen to fan noise. It was silent at idle, and then with the stress test going it wasn't loud at all. Despite this, the internals were cool at idle, and not too bad when under load. But this is because the 6th gen i7 was running at around 12 watts with a 2.4 GHz clock speed, which is base clock, no turbo for this chip. So basically it's hitting full speed under stress test. As expected, the dual core i3 isn't exactly a performance powerhouse, but should be fine for basic productivity tasks, and it does at least have hyper threading. The Cinebench score is at least a fair 
bit ahead of my more expensive Xiaomi Mi Air, which runs a lower powered dual core processor. Although not a gaming laptop by any means, the integrated graphics on the Intel chip can run basic games at low resolution. Dota 2 was playable with low settings at 720p. I've used Crystal Disk Mark to test the storage, and the 256 gig SATA SSD was doing fine, though the SD slot was on the slower side. But hey, better to have it than not. Well, maybe. The micro SD card clicks in, but I found it difficult to insert it because it sits the full way into the chassis, and this also made it difficult to remove as I basically had to try and use my fingernail to push the card in to click it out. So basically you're getting a nice and portable machine with a decent screen and above average build quality with Windows 10 for just $400. Sounds like a fair deal to me. The compromise is of course the hardware specs, but if your workload can get by with 8GB of memory, Wi-Fi 5 and dual core processor, which many productivity tasks easily can, then the Chewy CoreBook Pro could be worth considering, especially if you're otherwise in the market for something like a Chromebook. The only issues I had personally were the double pressing touchpad, not sure if that's just my unit though, and the micro SD slot was a little difficult to use. I'm interested to hear what you thought about the CoreBook Pro in the comments. Are you interested in more of these sorts of reviews? Let me know, and if you're new to the channel then get subscribed for future tech videos like this one.